Now here we have an 8x8 LED matrix and uh, in a previous video I showed you how to get this hooked up running on an Arduino and uh, here I have it running on a an ESP8266 module. So right now it's just playing the default text but I can send HTTP requests to this and change the text with ease. So let's have a look at that. Now the ESP is hooked to my local network through Wi-Fi and it's set up as a basic uh, web server so I can send HTTP requests. This is the address of that and if I don't put anything um, it just defaults back to the default message so that's how you kind of clear it out if you want to go back to the default message. But I can pass it this variable of msg for message and I can give it a message like this is cool and when I hit enter it will send that text to the display. So again, here we're playing, displaying the default text. I'm about to hit enter, and when I do, this is cool. It will loop that message over and over again. Now, you'll also notice that I have it so it displays back the text that you sent it as a confirmation in case you want to have your application confirm that the server, in this case, the ESP8266, has responded. Now, I'm doing it through a web browser here. The great thing is, any device, phone, tablet, uh, desktop, laptop, routers, basically all computers are connected to networks nowadays and can do simple HTTP requests. So another example of something that we can do is like this here. I can use wget if I want to write a shell script to control that message. So I can have a computer, it can be anything from a wall plug, your smart thermostat, your router, or a desktop laptop computer running a script that can just send a wget or a curl command. So in this example I'll say hello from the shell, and of course I want to spell things properly. Move this over, there we go. And when I hit enter, you can see that it sent the message. So now let's have a look at our screen here. And you can see that it says hello from the shell. And it's pretty much instant, uh, you know, a fraction of a second for it to communicate this way. Now, you might look at, and you see that I have uh, the the ESP8266 uh, board here hooked up to the computer through USB. That's just for power now. We're not communicating through that. We're actually communicating through Wi-Fi. This, this little chip has been programmed to connect to my local network. When I flashed, I flashed over, you know, the SSID, which is the name of my network, and the password for it, the, the passphrase. And so it's connected and it's just sitting there as a web server waiting for requests. And when it sees one, it, go ahead, it goes ahead and updates the string that uh, is being sent to the screen here. So this is a great way, and again, these little matrix screens can be hooked up uh, in, in a series. So you can have a bunch of them hooked up and make a long message if you want. You can have yourself a little marquee. And with a little chip like this, and this is actually one of the larger size ones, um, Actually, yeah, this, this board is actually a lot larger than any other ESP I have. Um, but with a little board like that, that's, again, $3 for this particular model, $3 and change, uh, you can have yourself a little marquee that you can update with simple, simply by sending it requests. If you've been following my videos for a while on both my channels, but especially this channel, you know that I love these little ESP8266 chips. Uh, they're cheap, they're small, they're low power. Well compared to a lot of microcontrollers are actually high in power, but uh, they, they run on, on, on three to five volts, depending on the model you get, and they're just so small and cheap, and if you, if you know me, I love being able to do things through a web interface because it just works out of the box with everything. It doesn't matter whether you have an Android phone, a Windows phone, an iPhone, uh, same with your tablets, it doesn't matter what you're running on your desktop. Any computer in the last 20 some years, 30 years, uh, can, that can connect to a network, which is pretty much every computer, can send requests to these devices. And as you can see, with a simple little request like that, you can update your screen. And that's just one screen. I hope you've been watching this series. I've been doing a lot on different displays. And uh, not all of them work with this particular, with an ESP alone, because some of them require analog pins or more pins than I have on the ESP. Um, but a lot of them that only need a few pins for communication, 
can work through the ESP and you can update them. And in this case, I am sending a signal to the ESP, but you can also have the ESP periodically check a web server. So in this case, it is a web server. You can also have it as a web client, or actually you can run as both at the same time. Um, but again, let's say I want this little screen to display the weather in Naples, which is where I live, uh, which doesn't change that much. So I could have it check, you know, if, I, if it was something that wanted to be updated regularly, I could check every, every 10 or 15 seconds or a minute or once an hour or twice a day or whatever. And um, it can grab that text and display it to this screen or other screens. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Oh, I almost forgot to mention I didn't go over the code because the code is basically the same code uh, as, as it's a mixture of code from the past. But all my codes for pretty much all my projects on this channel, at least at the time being, are on my GitHub site. So check out the link in the description. It's github.com forward slash metalx1000. Uh, and then the project, uh, the repository is called Hardware. And in there, look for, if you, for the ESP, look under ESP displays. And this is the uh, matrix display, uh, the 8x8 display. So go ahead and get the code from there. All you have to do is change the line for your SSID, which would be the name of your network, put in the passphrase for your network, and then if you want to change the default message, change that string. Other than that, the code's ready to go. Load it to the ESP8266, hook up your display, um, which I forgot to go over. Let's go over that right now. So now different pins can be used, uh, and I have this all in the code that I talked about that's in the uh, description, my example code. I have everything labeled, um, but the pins I'm using, the pins you need for this screen, there are five pins. There's power, three volt power, ground, and then you have yourself your data pin, uh, the CS pin, and the clock pin. So the data in, the digital in. Uh, so on the ESP, if you have a development board like this, uh, you have your three volts, your ground, and then I have it set up for GPI open uh, 12, 13, and 15, which is labeled on the ESP, if you have a similar model, uh, is six, seven, and eight. Again, I have this labeled in the code, um, but we have uh, the digital in, is D6, which is G G I o pin, uh, GPIO pin 12. It's kind of confusing because these are labeled one way, but if you're using the Arduino interface, the GPIO pins are, are labeled differently. But it's, again, GPIO pin 12, 13, and 15, which on here is 6, 7, and 8. And um, that corresponds to your digital in, your CS pin, and your clock pin on the back here. And then if you want to relay other screens, you can do that and modify the code. It asks how many uh, screens are being used. So that is it. Again, this code is self-explanatory, I, I think. Uh, I went over most of it in detail in previous videos, so be sure you watch the previous videos because I went over the code in detail for the Arduino. And it's basically the same code. The only difference is I added in the web server uh, functions for the ESP, which is just from the example. Uh, and then I, um, the only thing I did was uh, grab the, the argument being sent through the uh, URL string and convert it to the uh, character array that's required for the screen. Uh, so check it out. If you have any questions on the code, let me know. But again, it's pretty straightforward. And all you have to do uh, to get working like this is again, put in your network's name, your network's password, and then also if you want to change the default message, which is right now Films by Chris, um, which is my website. Yes, my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description to that. Again, a link to my GitHub page, as well as a link to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. If you like my videos and watch them a lot, think about becoming a supporter, even a dollar or two a month, is very helpful. If you can't help support me financially, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are great, especially sharing. You know, if you can get more people watching my videos, that helps me out a lot. Um, and it keeps me making videos. So I thank you for watching. And, you know, again, be sure to check out my website, link in the description, Films by Chris. There you can search through all my videos from this channel and previous channels. And again, uh, I hope that you have a great day.